皆さん、こんにちは。えっ、ー、と、今日は、えっ、ー、と、タイのバンコクで開催されている、サーズセントラルライブディープダイブエイパック2025に来ていて、えっ、ー、と、グーグルのゲリがいるので、えっ、ー、と、同じのインタビューをしてみたいと思います。Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So the first question is,、uh, if I block Google Extended,、uh, my content won't be used to train Gemini app and products AI API. However, this doesn't affect AI overview or AI mode. But、uh, AI overview and AI model also use a、uh, customized Gemini as their LLM.、Yeah. Why is this the case? Does Google separate content for training the Gemini app from content used by AI overview and AI mode, even if all of it comes from Google Extended? Right. So, as you noted, the, the model that we use for AIO,、uh, for AI overviews and、uh, for AI mode is a custom Gemini model. And that might mean that it was trained differently.、Um, I don't know the exact details、mm -hmm. how it was trained, but it, that, it's definitely a custom、mm -hmm. model. So, does that mean Gemini and AI, AI overview and AI, AI mode use、uh, separate indexes for grounding? As far as I know, Gemini, AI overview, and、uh, AI mode all use、uh, Google search for、mm -hmm. grounding. Mm -hmm. So basically, they issue multiple queries to Google Search,、mm -hmm. and then Google Search return, returns results for that, those particular queries. Does that mean that the、uh, training data are used by AI or an AI, AI mode collected by regular Google Bot, not Google Extended? But you have to remember that when grounding happens, there's no AI involved. So basically, it's the generation、mm -hmm. that is affected by the、uh, Google Extended. But also, if you Disallow Google Extended, then Gemini is not going to,、uh, to ground、um, for your site, basically.、Uh, you know Dan Petrovic? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So、uh, his, experiment of, his experiment found that the AI mode does not get page content directly from the live web, while Gemini does. Is this accurate? He connected it. I mean, I don't, I don't know what Gemini does because I never worked on Gemini, but、uh, AI mode is definitely just doing whatever we, or retrieving whatever it is in our index.、Mm -hmm. Um, so, it's not doing, as far as I know currently, it's not doing live patches. So, next question is As more content is created by AI, LLMs learn from that content.、Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this trend and what are its potential drawbacks? Like, for example, Google might have to crawl too many pages or the quality of its search index. Could suffer. I, I'm not worried about the search index, but model training definitely needs to figure out how to exclude content that was generated by AI. Otherwise,、uh, you end up in a training loop, which is really not great for, for training. I'm not sure how much of a problem this is right now, or mainly because how we select the documents that we train on. I said,、uh, you don't uh, care uh, how the content is created by、sure. uh, AI or、uh, humans. I said,、uh, so as long, as long as the quality is high,、mm -hmm. use、uh, AI generated content、sure. for training. Sure. So AI is trained by content created by AI, and then AI, 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 AI. Sure, but if, the, if you can maintain the quality of the content、mm -hmm. and the accuracy of the content, ensure that it's of high quality,、mm -hmm. then technically it doesn't really matter. The problem starts to arise when the content is either extremely similar to something that was already created, which hopefully we are not going to have in our index to train on anyway.、Um, and then the second problem is when you are training on inaccurate data. And that is probably the riskier one because then you start introducing biases and they start introducing counterfactual. Data in, in, in your models.、Uh, as long as the, the content quality is high, which typically nowadays requires that the human reviews the generated content, it, it is fine for model training. So, you said in a session that uh, used uh, content uh, created by humans、mm -hmm. at the moment. But it might, it can be changed in the future if AI can create a high quality content. I don't think that we are going to change our guidance anytime soon about whether you need to review it or not.、Mm -hmm. So basically, when we say that it's human, I think the word human created is wrong. Basically, it should be human curated.、Mm -hmm. um, so basically, someone. Had some editorial oversight、mm -hmm. over the content and validated that it's factually correct and accurate. What、uh, the question is Cloudflare recently launched、uh, Paper Pro, which uses the HTTP 402 payment required status code, I think, which is、uh, under development. If not, I, I don't、yeah. know. So, would you expect this new technology will benefit both publishers and AI companies? Including Google? Honestly, I don't have thoughts on this、um, yet because I was doing a, another event、uh, when this was announced.、Um, I haven't had time to digest it yet. So now uh, many uh, big publishers have decided to block、uh, Google AI c o l l a r s to extend it. Would it negative impact 
um, Google's training? You mean Google search or in general? Uh, in general. In general, I have no idea because I, the, basically the models are generally trained by DeepMind. Mm -hmm. Never worked on DeepMind. Mm -hmm. From Google search perspective, it's I don't think yeah. it causes any problem. Mm -hmm. There's I think I think for publishers there's two schools of thought. Uh, one is let's block all AI crawlers. Second is let's see where this is going. Um, and I tend to fall on in the second group personally, like not with my Google hat on, because I do think that AI has potential in AI systems in surfacing uh, content. There is potential for getting revenue from this. How it will look like, I have no idea. But I would not want to miss out on it. Because we see that new age groups like Gen Z, they actually really love uh, these uh, AI interfaces, AI systems. So we see that Gen Z um, really like these AI systems and how the, how the content is surfaced for them. So if they are going to be the next user base, large user base, then perhaps we need to figure out how to get value, value out of these results for publishers as well. But if you are not in the results, then how are you going to get out the revenue or whatever it is that benefit? So uh, like I said, now many publishers don't want to their content to be used as a training model by mm -hmm. the LLMs. Personally, I don't care about it. At the moment, there is no uh, perfect solution yeah. to say solve it. How can we uh, have a more granular solutions in the near future, in say in a few years, for to more granular control? Oh, ah, like so. There's definitely ideas floating around. I'm involved in an ITF working group mm -hmm. called uh, AI Preferences, mm -hmm. where we are talking about developing a standard that would allow publishers to granularly control what the content is can be used for. Um, I don't know where it's going to go, but it is something that we are working on with IPF, um, and uh, it does have momentum. Where, when, or if it will be launched, that's to be seen. There's lots of misconceptions still about AI, even in the technical space. So for example, related to inference, there are lots of questions. There's also concerns about people are blocking things that they don't fully understand, then that might somehow decrease innovation in the space, which I'm not saying is good or bad, but it might happen. Um, so yeah, there's lots of considerations um, to, be, to be taken into account, um, and uh, we don't yet know where are we going to go with it. So, but we are definitely working on it. I'm looking forward to the new solution being launched sometime soon. It's not a Google thing, so, I know. It's, so a, it's a IET, IET, yes, Internet Engineering Task Force. Well, this is my last question. Uh, it's not uh, related to uh, AI. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. thank you. Before you. So you mentioned in a session that a 404 pages don't use uh, use up crawl budget. Right. right? Uh, however, what if a site has a huge number of 404 pages? Will we not be able to try to crawl 404 pages from time to time to confirm they are still unavailable? Correct. Yeah. yeah. But, but so what's the question? So a 404 pages uh, don't consume crawl budget. Yeah. Please clarify it. 404 pages don't consume crawl budget. Like, but I, I, th I think it's kind of rational because it's very easy to point a lot of broken links to a competitor. And then does that, or should that mean that you eat up or you manage to eat up your competitor's crawl budget? Yeah. It should not mean that. So basically the best way to avoid that is to basically don't count 404 pages in the, in, in crawl budget. Yeah, that makes sense. But say, what if uh, my site uh, has say, millions and millions of 404 pages, does that uh, prevent normal pages or uh, normal pages from being crawled? I mean, it does take up some scheduling, mm. but the, like scheduling, is generally not going to be a problem because once we discover that one pattern, for example, is generally 404, uh, like one URL pattern, then we will start crawling less and less from there. So basically, I, I don't see how it would be a problem. One thing that I know that is causing problems for publishers because we get um, crawl, er, crawl issues reports about this is when your 404 pages makes uh, expensive operations on the website. So for example, it issues multiple SQL SQL queries, mm -hmm. um, and then it's waiting to, for the data to come back. Um, and basically it's eating up the resources of the server um, for useless pages. My recommendation for those cases is that you basically try the simplest 404 page that you can afford uh, to have and go with that instead of uh, expensive, computationally expensive pages, because 404s do happen. And every now and then we will discover a large swath of 404s on your site and then we eat up your server resources ex accidentally. So in any event, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, no. for basis in terms of uh, global budget. No. All right, perfect. All right, next, uh, 
Leon? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have three questions. Okay. The first one is going to be, let's say if there's a content, that content itself is legit, the sentences mm -hmm. are legit. But, and also there are a lot of images which are relevant to the content itself, but all of them, let's say all of them are generated by AI. Mm -hmm. Will that content, is, the overall content or the, the overall site is going to be penalized or not? No. No? no. So AI generated image doesn't impact the SEO? Um, not directly. So obviously when you put images on your site, you will have to sacrifice some resources to, mm -hmm. to those images. Um, and then, but otherwise, you are not going to, I, I don't think that you're going to see any uh, negative impact from that. Okay. Um, if anything, you might get some traffic out of image search for mm -hmm. them or video search or whatever. Um, but otherwise, it should just be fine. All right, then the next question. So this is about the SEO and social media. Um, is the number of the views, shares on the social media will be used as one of the ranking signals for uh, SEO or in general? For this, we have basically a very old, very canned response and something that we learned, or it's based on something that we learned over the years, or particularly one incident around 2014. The answer is no. And for the future, it's also likely no. And that's because we need to be able to control our own signals. And then if we are looking at external signals, so for example, a social networks, signals that's not in our control yeah sure. so basically if someone on that social network decides to inflate the number mm -hmm. we don't know if that inflation was legit or not and we have no way knowing that okay and the last question um so still ai mode is not available in japan but a lot of people are kind of like showing a lot of interest in it mm -hmm. and this is my personal question but um would there is there be uh, is there a chance that advertisements will be shown in ai mode i have no idea i never worked on ads I'm assuming yes, because I also didn't know what's going to happen with Discover, for example. Yeah. And that, um, it, just yesterday I saw an ad in Discover. I didn't mm -hmm. even know that we have in a Discover ads. So I'm assuming yes, but it's not my field really. And it's not my decision for certain. So do you think that's highly likely? I don't know how to answer it because I, I never worked on ads or with ads. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's, even a, if, if it's even one of those services where ads make sense. But this question came from, um, for example, like AM mode is still not the main uh, tool that users, people use in order to search information, right? But what if AI mode gets like much bigger and people mainly use AI mode in order to look for some information? And then obviously Google is going to lose revenue from the uh, classic search that, you know, they used to make from the advertisement, right? So how are they going to make the revenue? In I don't know, but it's not my, <laughs> it's not my problem. We have people to figure these things out. So yeah. it's really just not my problem how Google makes its money. My job is to answer these kind of questions. <laughs> well, not the ask questions, but the previous yeah. uh, questions. Um, sure. And uh, to, to the best of my ability, and basically that's it. And you said you don't like AI more personally? I don't like AI in general personally. In general. Um, I like. I don't like generative AI. I think predictive AI is uh, incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. Like Hanjin yesterday was showing. Um, Mura -san, Mura -san. <laughs> uh, was showing uh, yesterday um, how they used to yeah, yeah, yeah. improve the quality of the overall site. Mm -hmm. uh, like for that, like that's just mind blowing. Yeah, that's uh, for summarization. Like Suzuki Sam was showing how you can save time by instead of listening to. Uh, Martin and Gary uh, bantering on a podcast, just plug it in into an AI model and then you will get a summary of the most important points and hope that it's the most important points. Um, so yeah, like like for those kind of things, I think it's good, but it is generally used for stuff that it's not great at. Um, image generation, I have concerns about that um, because it's very easy to abuse it. Yeah. That's one thing. And the other thing is that as soon as you get to a topic that the AI is not familiar with, then it will start making really weird hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we were chatting about the um, text in uh, AI generated uh, images, mm -hmm. like how it always has typos and yeah, how yeah. It messes things up. And that's inherently in the model, like it's the model's fault because it doesn't know that these are characters, it's just a pointy shape. Mm -hmm. And it has to be in this order, just like I on the left side is going to be followed by an I on the mm -hmm. right side. Um, but it doesn't know that that's text. 
In fact, it doesn't know anything. Yeah. So that does that mean you didn't like my session, my talk about using generative AI? Is this their role? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I'm just kidding. I, I actually really like the session because it was, I think it was either non-conclusive or um, it was showing that human stuff is still important. Yeah. So as, as long as human stuff is important. And last question. Please make it sure that uh, you will host uh, Sustainable Life in Japan uh, sometime uh, later this year, October. We will try. <laughs> we will see where it goes. But we will definitely try. I need to eat to come ということで、秋におそらく日本でもサーチエンドライブをやってくるはずなので、今度は日本でゲイリーやるので、その時まだみんなでいろいろ質問しましょう。では、これで終わります。バイバーイ。